We've all heard the news about the regrets and setbacks the Women's National Basketball Association has been going through ever since the female basketball star Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever were eliminated from the WNBA playoffs. The league has seen a dip in attention across various metrics, whether it's social media engagement, TV ratings, or arena attendance. Here's something that's standard. Caitlin Clark isn't just another basketball player. She's the ticket fuel the WNBA has been desperately waiting for and depending on. Think of the WNBA as a car that has been cruising along for almost 30 years, sometimes running on fumes, but then Caitlin comes along like premium gas, exactly the kind the car needs. And suddenly, the car's engine roars to life. Caitlin has had a significant impact on the WNBA. From bringing in more talented players from college into the league, it achieved record-breaking viewership and gathered a fan base that would always fill up the arena during each game. It's been from one achievement to another. Her achievements are not behind the scenes. For something even more beautiful, when WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert was asked about Caitlin, she gave her a massive shout out. She's clearly an unbelievable player, came in with an unbelievable following, has brought a lot of new fans to the league. If you look at our historic season around. Clark received the most all-star game votes in WNBA history with 700,735 votes and even became the first player in league history to earn WNBA Eastern Conference Player of the Month and Rookie of the Month honors in the same month. First in the league in fast break points. Clark. At just 22, she's changed the world of women's basketball by a long list of achievements right from her college days. She shattered numerous records, including becoming the all-time leading scorer for both men's and women's basketball. For history, there it is! The all-time leading scorer. After her college career, the Wall Street Journal proclaimed her the GOAT of TV ratings, writing that her impact on television viewership exceeded that of any modern athlete. Caitlin can drastically change her environment and the environment around her, like when the Los Angeles Aces had to move their July 2nd game against Clark's Fever to a larger capacity venue because tickets were tremendously sold out following the presence of Caitlin. Her dynamic playing style has revolutionized the women's game and brought it to another level. However, when her team was eliminated from the WNBA playoffs, it started to become too obvious the mistakes the WNBA might have made. Here's how. Before the elimination, things were on an offspring for the WNBA. The 2023 National Championship Games set the women's college basketball viewership record with 9.9 .9 million viewers. She drew casual viewers to the title game in part due to her long-range three-point shooting. Caitlin has drawn the attention of other basketball stars to attend the game between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the LSU Tigers. It had big celebs like LeBron James and Travis Scott watching, plus an additional 12 million viewers tuned in. It was one of the most watched college basketball games ever, both men's and women's. On March 3rd, 2024, her game against Ohio State, in which she surpassed Pete Maravich to become the NCAA Division I all-leading time scorer, averaged 3.39 million viewers. It was the most watched women's regular season college basketball game on Fox and any network since 1999. Dick's Sporting Goods even announced that it is selling Caitlin Clark Fever apparel at all 724 of its stores following the craze for her college merch. That is exactly what happened when she came over to the WNBA. In 2024, attendance increased by nearly 50% compared to 2023. Indiana Fever led with an average home attendance of over 17,000 at GameBridge Fieldhouse, a year-over-year -year increase of 39%. Indiana's regular season finale in Washington set a league attendance record with 20,711 spectators, and we have Caitlin to be thanked for that. The numbers are higher and raging, and what the numbers are basically saying is that Caitlin WNBA is completely different from the previous iteration. The regular season nationally recorded the WNBA games with an average of 6,507,000 viewers, which is the highest audience in 24 seasons. Televised games with Caitlin Clark's Indiana Fever had an average of 1.18 million viewers. 22 games averaged over 1 million viewers, and 19 of them involved Indiana Fever. Wheeler finds Clark from the logo! 
Caitlin Clark was selected first overall by the Indiana Fever in the 2024 WNBA Draft, and her draft was wild. It became the most viewed WNBA event since 2000 when the Liberty played the Houston Comets in a May contest. The Indiana Fever select Caitlin Clark, University of Iowa. Caitlin's highly anticipated WNBA regular season debut, without surprise, broke ESPN WNBA viewership records. Here's something very interesting. Before this season, the WNBA had no game with more than 1 million viewers since 2008, but the Indiana Fever rookie scored 20 points as 2.1 million fans watched across ESPN2, ESPN+, and Disney+. It was the most watched WNBA game on any ESPN platform in history. The Fever Sun matchup peaked at 2.3 million viewers. The most watched regular season game was between Indiana Fever and Chicago Sky. Chicago, however, defeated Indiana Fever 88-87. The game aired on ESPN on June 23rd and averaged 2.35 million, becoming the most watched WNBA game in 23 seasons. Another Indiana-Chicago matchup on CBS averaged another 2.23 million viewers. With Caitlin playing, the WNBA drew a record 1.84 million viewers to her first playoff game against the Connecticut Sun on September 22nd while competing with an NFL Sunday. She followed it up with another record audience of 2.54 million viewers for Game 2, but the worst possible outcome happened for the WNBA when Caitlin and her team lost both games and were officially eliminated from the playoffs. Now, the teams remaining that are still contending for the WNBA WNBA titles are the New York Liberty, the defending champion Las Vegas Aces, the Sun, and the Minnesota Lynx. There are still some big names left like Asia and Sabrina, but then there's no Caitlin Clark, and it's obvious. The rising tides and numbers were a constant talk about, and Caitlin Clark was in the middle of it all, but now everything has changed with her and Fever's elimination from the WNBA playoffs. The first weekend of the WNBA without the rookie superstar was eye-opening, to say the least. The first game between the Aces and Liberty, a rematch of last year's WNBA Finals, between two of the league's most popular and successful teams drew an audience of 929,000. This is 50% less than Caitlin's Fever game against the Sun. Game one of the Unlink series was even worse, as it had an audience of just about 650,000. Both of those games have also fallen well behind some of Caitlin's regular season games in terms of viewership. In early September, Clark's Indiana played in front of a TV audience of 1.26 million viewers in a game against the Minnesota Lynx that was played at the same time as the Week 1 Friday night NFL game. Caitlin's first regular season finale against the Washington Mystics on September 19 had a total of 20,711 fans show up at Capital Arena, and that set a new record for the highest attended WNBA regular season contest. On the TV front, Caitlin made the Fever the most watched team in the WNBA by a landslide in her rookie year, as the 14 most watched WNBA games of the season all included Fever, and this is not the first time we have seen the ratings take a nosedive without Caitlin Clark. One reason why there was such pushback when Caitlin didn't make it on the Team USA Olympic team was because everyone wanted to see her play internationally, and without her, barely anyone tuned in to watch the squad play. Nevertheless, for a Team USA's game, rife with stars, expected to blow out their competition, they drew the worst crowd. Lowest attendance of the Olympics. How does it feel, Team USA, to have six games, four of them drew over 20,000, and the one that did it still drew 2,000 more than you? If fans had the power to choose the MVP, Caitlin Clark would be racking up MVP titles for the next 100 years. No question. That's just how massive her popularity is. The WNBA is falling apart without her now. Almost 2 million fans tuned in just to watch her playoff debut with the Indiana Fever.
The world of basketball and every other sport is changing. Sure, it's still a team sport, but social media has changed most things. Fandom is now taking over, and that's the case for Caitlyn. It's almost like when LeBron left Cleveland and Messi joined Inter Miami. That's the kind of fan base Caitlyn has, and they are headstrong and moving with her. I'm here, so we're just excited to come from Iowa to come here. Um, help support women's sports, basketball, Caitlin Clark, the whole, the whole business. Um, I love it. To be able to come here, have fun, give my daughter the trip up. It's a trip of a lifetime. My wife talked me into getting season tickets last year, and I'm so glad she did because we enjoy the heck out of this. This is just amazing. We're ready to scream our lips off. Yeah, I'm ready to lose my voice. It's pretty exciting because I like Caitlin Clark, and she's pretty exciting to watch. She's an inspiration because all of her moves and tricks teaches me like some of them and her three-pointers that she makes. She says awesome and I want to be like her one day. She's one of my favorite players. I don't, something about her, the way her aggression, the way she plays, how she doesn't take any hate, I love it. The happening with Caitlin, Indiana Fever, and the WNBA has proved that it's all about talent and the love from the fandom. And that's where the WNBA might have just overlooked. What are your takes on what happened? Let us know in the comments section as we've come to the end of this video. Don't forget to like and share, follow, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye!